Hey, put some food snack in a little video. Um, this one is on. I, I did it, but I've been having trouble with my um, video editor that I had before. And so now I uh, have to download a new one until I can change my computer and all that. Um, so hopefully that'll work great. As you can see, still in the moving phase. Um, but uh, everything is kind of set up a little bit. It was a little bit harder with the COVID which I'm going to do a video on, um, which is kind of interesting because last week uh, when I did the video, a uh, week, a week and a half ago when I did the video, it, already things changed. So it's a really fast uh, changing um, situation. Some of say, I may say in this video right now, it may change next week or the week after as, as data comes in. But what I wanted to uh, talk about is a little bit demystify or debunk some of the stuff that are going out and some miscommunications uh, that are, are um, coming out of some videos that I've seen and some rec even some recommendation of the experts because they use some words and people kind of misunderstand what it is. So this video will kind of have two parts. First one will be the prevention and what you can do. And the second one, I didn't see many videos of that, but if you're taking care of someone uh, and uh, what you can do uh, to help them. So the first part we're going to be talking about is the uh, prevention. Now everybody now, probably uh, most of the place around the world, no matter where you are, you're doing social distancing. And uh, one of the reasons uh, for that is, and you're probably tired of hearing that word, is to flattening the curve. You know, many people, many places have actually flattening the curve. Uh, here, uh, I think in BC, we're uh, in British Columbia, I think we're starting to, I'm starting to see some statistic that uh, we have no new case. Uh, so it's, when you have no new cases, basically it kind of stays like this. That's what they call flattening the curve. And other places, they're still kind of going up, uh, like in the states, sadly. Uh, but I know some states, I think they are um, coming out and they're starting to flatten the curve. So hopefully, it will flatten the curve. Why it's so important is not really talked about. So in the previous video, I kind of talk about um, the cycle of how a disease is transmitted. Um, and uh, one of the reasons that flattening the curve is very important is because uh, what we call R naught, and basically the R naught means like how many, if I get the disease, how many times I can transmit to other people. Like I said, right now, because it's kind of a progressive uh, situation, it's hard to know the actual uh, R naught. They know that it's probably around two point, I think it was two, 2.5, the last one I checked. Um, but it keeps it keeps changing. One thing they know for sure that it's a little bit more infectious than uh, the flu. Does that mean that it's more dangerous than the flu? Yes, because when people have when they get sick, uh, they get sick uh, with a serious so the um, uh, mortality is a little bit higher up. Uh, but the, on the other hand, as well, is then. Uh, People seems to be over focused on oh my god it doesn't mean if you have COVID that you have a dead sentence and this is what seems to be people go here from I was just a flu it's nothing else to oh my god I'm gonna die if I get it there's still about 80% of the people that gets it gets the mild symptom and there's even some people that do have it right now which is uh, one of the well I'll talk about it in the prevention um, they are asymptomatic they have the virus but they don't seem to be um, transmitting or they don't have they have like very minimal um, uh, symptoms so uh, with, with this in mind um, yes we're trying to prevent and this is why we need to flatten the curve because if I get it and I can give it to uh, three other people so let's say we go with the three two point five to three um, that means those three gives it to three and so that means it's not just uh, one person, two person, three person. That means now one person gave it to three, three gave it to nine. And as you go, 
you it's an exponential so that's why by flattening the curve and decreasing how many people have it you decrease how many other people gets it um, so based on that this is why they keep asking people to stay home uh, not to share uh, not to go out uh, uh, social distancing if you're going out try to stay to essential and we're doing a pretty good job at this it brings to the point of the testing initially it was very important in South Korea is, is a be the best example for that early on was very important to do testing why because of that so what South Korea did was if you had the symptoms and it was easier to know it back then because it then spread out like it is now now it's in the communities it's a little bit everywhere so just even taking the train you could get it uh, if you go into the grocery you could get it uh, back then when they started it was just the people from Wuhan that was moving in or it, it was really it was easier to uh, figure it out who was at higher risk now pretty much everybody's at risk for getting it because it's in the community um, so back then they did it a testing and so what they did was they test you you test positive then they go see where did you go did you uh, go to work did you do groceries then they would go to those places, uh, track those people find other testing and then uh, isolate those people and so by doing that they cut their curve very quickly and very sharp um, there's a lot of graphics out there if you want to look at them and it's very interesting and probably in the future when all this is finished and they do a study um, not to pick on them but for example the American and uh, South Korea had almost their case at the same time and then uh, South Korea flattening their curve very quickly and the states are still going up because they didn't uh, do early testing like South Korea did. In Canada we kind of went in between and so we're not as, as rising up as the states are but we're uh, not either flying our curve like South Korea did either because um, we still kept our border open a little bit later and things and, and again a lot of things like it's easy to blame play the blame game right now but right now it's responding to whatever it is and uh, study a little bit later but that's why testing was important as it goes on now yes testing is still important but a lot of people seem to be like I need to be tested it's not so much important so let's say you have let's say the mild uh, version of it and you're at home and you can self modify you get uh, the you're just coughing and, and you're okay that you know that you have COVID or not it's not that important if you're staying at home from from a medical point of view so that means your treatment won't change we're treating symptoms we don't have a treatment for covid we don't um, even if you test positive so for for example let's say two people shows up uh, one has the flu because the flu season is still going on or any other uh, things that um, rsv is still out so there's other symptoms that could show up just like covid so let's say you got two of those people showing up at the emergency one is covid and the other one is not and they have cold uh, flu symptoms runny nose and anything that I swab one or I swab the other one it doesn't change my treatment I'm going to change the same treatment I'm going to give the same uh, uh, symptoms relief for both of them and I will ask them both to isolate themselves even if we don't um, test and so there's some time working in the emergency that I work um, unless they meet certain criteria or they get admitted to the hospital they don't need to be tested because if they go home isolate their self do the 15 days and the symptoms improve that they had COVID or non-COVID it's not important from an epidemiology point of view it increased the numbers or not and it helps you know are we improving or uh, for example for flattening the curve that helps to keep those numbers but from a treatment point of view that you have COVID or you do not have COVID is not that much important so at this point treatment is, um, testing is still important but not for a lot of what people seem to believe to. they want to be tested to know that they'll be treated but let's say you have symptomatic and you COVID positive the only thing we can tell you is stay home don't do anything 
and that's it but you cannot it we won't give you a pill we won't give you a vaccine we won't give you there's no treatment we're treating the symptoms um, when they test positive um, in the hospital the reason we do this is because they go on special units to stop the spreading so we're kind of self isolating ourselves um, from putting a patient we would put a patient that has like certain symptoms and then again because we're having the flu season and uh, other uh, medical issues so people can still have uh, heart failures and come in respiratory distress why is it respiratory distress because they have heart failure or it is because they have covid but if i put this person and it comes back covid positive and i put him on a uh, unit that had other people with heart problems i can i just had an outbreak going on so this is why in the hospital we share but for um, the community it's not so much important uh, to separate for that so for the testing yes it's important uh, for certain uh, things but not as much as people seem to want they want to be tested and the reason that they don't need to be tested is that there's nothing new, uh, new or, or won't change your treatment if you have a cold you have a cold and the same symptoms that you have COVID cold or you have a like you have the COVID uh, symptoms or do you have a cold or do you have influenza but you're still able to do it at home and man monitor yourself at home you go home and you just stay for 50, 14 days it doesn't matter because you're staying at home and you're self uh, quarantining yourself or in some space uh, state they monitor you to stay at home because it's you need to monitor them a little bit closer um, for um, depending on the orders that they give so now how do we prevent us to get at this um, most of the place if you're staying at home and you're doing social distancing that's the best way um, there's some literature that's came out now and it, that's where the confusion is coming out a lot of people you still use the word it's airborne now and it's not airborne it is still droplet but and this is the big but but let's make clear it is not airborne airborne means that if I go in the same room that a some person has it and it's facing the wall I can still get it if I'm behind that person if I'm within the same room and I breathe the same air yes I can get it that's different than droplet that are in suspensions so it's very important to understand that difference because people keep using the word airborne because it stays in the air but it's different it's not because I still if I keep that two meter uh, distance and some of those droplets stays in the air and I still have that two meters I cannot get it but with airborne even if I'm staying within that two meters I could still get it so it's really important for people to understand the research that have came out and this is why for example CDC and some other people have started to change um, their uh, their guidelines on people wearing masks is that it's because of that new uh, there's those new studies first of all those studies what have they're shown is that the the way they study it is that some of the particles so, so, so let's call it the shell of the virus are still present but what they don't know and that what they cannot prove yet in it is is that enough so for example let's say uh, you would have like a peanut so you have a shell and you have like a peanut inside the shell so if I want to eat a peanut I cut, I cut the shell I eat the peanut and I have the shells and if I drop it on the on on the ground the shells are there well, a little bit the same thing with the virus is that there's a part of the virus that can make you sick and you need a certain amount of it to go inside your body to make you uh, to, to to be able to make you sick. What they found this study is that the RNA, so that means the, um, the shell of the virus is in the air but what they don't know is that is there peanuts inside the shell or it's just a shell that they have not been able to prove if it's not if it is the peanut with the shell and the peanuts inside that would mean that those 
droplets that are they're uh, called uh, bioaerosols so they're a little bit different than uh, droplets because they're a little bit lighter and if they could stay that means me talking to you uh, if you're close enough you could get it versus you don't need that push of droplets where we were talking about because they're uh, they're uh, smaller so they can just by uh, talking or breathing if you're in close uh, part from me you could get it uh, so that means like if I'm in the train and again that two meter circle if I'm a pro if I'm uh, holding the social distancing that means I do not have I cannot get it so I don't need a mask if I'm saying you're staying two meters out of me so if I'm uh, if I'm at the supermarket and I'm keeping that two two meter uh, mask, there's le there's not a lot of chance that I'm gonna get it. there's no chance that I will get it unless you know I touch surface and again I touch mine and so that's where also a mask help. But also you have to be sure and we'll talk a little bit about the PPE for that. You have to make sure that you don't touch your mouth with the subs the touching that you have. So that's always that's again the higher risk. But there is a little risk now, but they don't know if you can get sick from those from those bioaerosols, or if you uh, or, or if they're just inert. And some studies have shown like it kind of stays in the air. So, for example, places like a supermarket, like the doors where obviously people are waiting in line, if they're breathing, it's kind of staying in that area. It's a little bit like if you ever been camping and suddenly you walk and there's this kind of uh, little place where all the mosquitoes are standing. And then once you're past that uh, little cloud of mosquitoes, you're fine. But for whatever reason, the mosquito is staying like it's a little bit of the same thing. So yes, you could swallow some, but do you do you know if you get sick or not? So there is a possibility, but it's very minimal. And they, again, they don't know if people get sick from that. But to prevent that, and also studies that have shown that people were asymptomatic, this is where CDC has recommended. And this is where World Health Organization and CDC kind of disagree. Um, and Canada is kind of in between the boat. Is that they said now if everybody wears a mask, it uh, could help. But now this is where the difference is. The mask that you wear is not to protect you. It's to protect others. I'll repeat that one again to make sure that people understand. The mask, the mask, when you wear a mask in public, it's not to protect yourself, it's to protect others. Because what this mask do is it keeps your droplets, your, your uh, bioaerosols within the confinement of your mask. If somebody cough in your face, and you don't have the face shield or anything, you can still get it. Even if you have a mask, you can still get it because you don't have the, pr the proper pre-PE. It could come, if I'm wearing uh, a chain or something, it, might, it could deposit on there. It could deposit on, on pants if I'm wearing pants or uh, on my glasses. It could uh, go on my glasses. Yes, my um, eyes would be covered, but if it, it cough on my glasses and I take my glasses with my hands, it goes on my hands and then I, I go and I um, uh, wash my nose or something, it could go on there. So having a mask is not the solution for all. The self-isolation is the best way. Staying two meters from everybody is the best way. And also when you wear gloves, not to go and touch it. it it doesn't die on the gloves it's just a glove is kind of a second skin to protect you from leave it staying on your skin it's going to stay on the glove when you take off the glove but it won't stay on your skin so the mask is to protect others it's not to protect so much yourself uh, and we talk a little bit in the past that the mask is more a reminder so that when you go out you don't touch your mouth or um, or like if you're on the phone I've seen a lot of people they have a mask they're wearing gloves and then they talk on the phone like this well if it's on the phone it's gonna go into your mouth or even the worst thing is that people wear their mask something like this like it, it kind of goes like this or they'll have it like on one side um, it, it's the mask is contaminated this is why when we take our PPE it's one of the first thing we take off because this is considering the most contaminated part because again, if I had this and the person is um, sneeze on me, that means this part is the most contaminated because it contains everything. 
The other thing too uh, that some studies have shown, especially coming out of Wuhan, if I, let's say, um, those little mists that we saw and I pass in between just one, and there's let's say two, um, two of those shells that deposit or two um, virus that kind of deposit in the mask. If I were the mask for four, five, six hours, if I go around and multi places and two becomes four, becomes six, becomes seven, become eight, because I wore the mask for a certain period of time, the load, the viral load becomes to a point that it was not before, because it was just two or three, which let's say it takes a viral load of 10 to get sick. Well, if there was two or three, the viral load is too low, so that means there's not enough virus for me to get sick out of it. But if, because I wear this for four or five days, uh, four or five hours, and I go to the market, and I go to another place, and I go to another place, and now the viral load is 12, because I went to all those different places accumulating a virus here, a virus there, and lives, uh, it su uh, su survive on the surface for a certain period of time, now my viral load could be 12. Two things can happen. A lot of people, when they take off their mask, instead of taking it off uh, properly, what they do is they'll go like this. Well, now I just contaminated my hand. It's not the proper way to do it. The other thing that they'll do is they'll little sort of, you know, shaking up. That heroize everything. So even if I took off my mask and, you know, I'm kind of playing with this like this, it can heroize and I can breathe it in. So basically my mask has, uh, has used absolutely no purpose. So it's really important to, if you're wearing a mask, not being com to compliant. And again, it's understand the why you're doing something, not so much the what. It's not so much wearing the mask that protects you, it's the why you pr you're wearing the pr and am I wearing it pr properly. So let's talk a little bit about uh, those prevention. So if you're going out, um, that's a little bit controversial for especially groceries because now it's one of the places that people get the most because uh, we have to have groceries. And uh, this is one of the places that they say that a lot of people may get sick from going to the groceries. Uh, so the little thing I found me and what I'm using and, uh, is instead of wearing gloves, I went to the dollar store and I bought this um, um, bag for you know dogs when they poop and stuff like this. It was like a dollar or something like that. And so now what I do is I put this to go grab something. It's easier to, uh, to, to put on. I don't have to use proper PPE. Like it, it's not like a bench of gloves. I'm not using my supply for gloves to go out and do some groceries and stuff. And then when I'm finished, pretty easy to remove. And even if you really want to say, if you really want to save those and whatever, you can re-put them. If you remember that this is the clean part and you can put them properly, I've never touched the outside of the bag. Um, so I, w I carry those now and when I go shopping and do stuff and so if I pick up like a can. Uh, for the groceries as well, some studies have come and shown um, it survive on different and I'll have links uh, below um, 24 hours on uh, cardboard and um, some of the cans. It's mixed what I've been reading. Some people say not really needed to clean everything and some of their well I would clean everything and even they're talking about cleaning your vegetables and all that and stuff. Um, me I went kind of in between so what I do is um, I have uh, alcohol um, kind of um, swabs and uh, things for to clean. If I don't need to bring in the house right away, leave in the garage for 24 to 36 hours and then virus should have all be killed. But everything that comes out uh, gets a good uh, wipes and clean. And when you clean too, you have to leave it for one minute on the surface. It's not just, it doesn't die right away. So it has to have a minute to clean, to, to clean it. The other thing too, like we were talking about the mask, is wearing the mask properly. Uh, so for masks, you don't need an N95. If you're, again, to go into the communities, the next video will be on how to take care of people and that's different. So a lot of people may be asking, well, when you're in the hospital, why do we wear the medical mask and stuff? 
so first of all, the medical mask, uh, we call them surgical masks, and there's a reason for it. The reason you, you wear a surgical mask is that when they do surgery, they're above, and it's to keep their breathing and their bacteria and everything within their mask so it doesn't fall into the open abdomen that they have or anything like that. So it's to contain the bacteria that are going out. It's not really so much to protect them from the patient, it's to protect the patient from them. Um, the next thing too is that um, those masks, there's been studies when you wear them for a certain period of time, uh, up to two hours, three hours, they put like a pretty dish. So basically somebody had their mask and they put a petri dish and they breathe and they check uh, every, I think it was every 30 minutes, they check the thing. And after two hours, bacteria could pass through a, a surgical mask. That's bacteria. Virus is way smaller. So that means that probably COVID, after you use your mask for a certain period of time, it's, it's not good. To contain. The other thing too is healthcare professional need it more than the public. Not meaning that we're better than anybody else. Is that if you we have to go in and take care of people, so we have to be in their face. We have to enter within that two minutes, that two meters. We have to enter that thing. So this is why we need those masks, and this is why we need to remove them. So this is why they say people shouldn't go and buy and uh, deplete the stocks. For the healthcare professional when they're not really needed if you have a buff or if you have a mask and now like uh, uh, FEMA has put uh, some videos on how to make your own mask they're sufficient for the prevention and again we'll do another video on treatment that's different but for the prevention they're good now I want to talk a little bit about when you put those masks on first of all a lot of people that will put their mask, but if somebody sneezes, see all the, all those uh, little and I'll put my glasses so you can even see better. See how my glasses got all sprayed out. So if I'm just wearing the mask, it doesn't protect me against those droplets to go. And if you want to have a good uh, test. And if you want to uh, sim your put like a water bottle like this and put like colorant or something like this and go and spread and see if you touch it and, and uh, you can see your gear see if you know let's say you put some red on it do you have red everywhere do you have red in your face do you have red on the wall everywhere there's red that means that whatever there was let's say that was a virus it just uh, distributed to the cell so wearing the mask doesn't protect you from everything and even wearing my glasses that means that my glass is now uncontaminated so I need to clean this so when you wear the mask too and I'll do a quick test and hopefully it'll show on the camera you see all the air that went through it's because there's no uh, on here air can kind of goes like this I have a proper fit mask and you'll see I'll do another test so my glasses are clear now see when your mask is fitted it's quite different than a mask that is not sweaty see I can already have um, uh, fog in my glasses so if you have fog in your glasses and you wear because you're wearing glasses that means your mask is not fitted one thing that a lot of people do especially if you use a surgical one, there's a metal bar inside there. And what they do is they pinch it this way. But if you pinch it this way, things can pass through. So the proper way is to really, because we all have different nose and facial feature, so it's really important to smooth it out so that you get that perfect seal. Uh, so that first of all you don't get fogged when you're trying to do stuff and second of all it uh, offer you a better because if you're sneezing it doesn't come out and everything so you have a proper seal um those cotton for if you're going out again as prevention they would be good i would have three of them and basically what i would do is one when you use it second one is kind of drawing or has like a backup and the third one is getting clean and uh, you can use different solution uh, for that and uh, they, uh, I would use those ones and 
turning around like this. So now number two becomes your number one, number one becomes number three, and three becomes number two. And you rotate that every time you go out. So um, so that was a little bit uh, video on uh, the prevention. Uh, we're going to do uh, another one on uh, if you're taking care of people. And I'll talk to you soon.